Hello folks, Josh Moore here, pastor of the Red Door Church, South Royalton, Vermont. Well, this morning I've been wrestling with some really interesting things out of uh, Matthew's Gospel in chapter 25. And uh, there's a passage there that's uh, pretty well known. And and uh, it's about um, when the Son of Man comes in his glory with all the angels. And uh, they separate out the sheep from the goats. And of course the, the sheep are going to go to be with God and be blessed for eternity and the goats are going to destruction and um, and he says uh, it's interesting the, the sort of the test so to speak that is used in this passage um, to separate out the sheep and the goats the thing in this passage that divides those that he calls sheep and those that he calls goats is very very fascinating and um, you can read read about it for yourself but I'm going to read just a few words here out of uh, out of that section of text uh, starting in verse 34 then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. He says, I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was lonely. I was a prisoner, and you visited me. Um, and then it goes on to say this, And then the, the righteous respond, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in? When did we visit you in prison and clothe you and all of these, these things? And the, and the Lord, the King, answers and says to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. I've always found that very interesting, and I, I don't know that I've ever fully understand it or understood it. I mean, it's it seems like a very simple concept, but I guess I've never grasped the logic because there is a separation between who the Lord is and who we are. Um, yes, He took on our flesh. Yes, we bear His image, but we are not Jesus, um, obviously. And so I've, I've struggled with how how. Jesus can say that. Um, what what is the logic here? I've, I've wrestled with it quite some time. Is it just again that we we bear His image? It's a, like what 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 the Apostle John says in First John. He says, "If you cannot love, you know those who you see, then you cannot love God who you do not see. If you hate those who bear God's image, um, whom God loves and God made, then you cannot love God." Is it that kind of a, of a logic, an image of God logic, so to speak? Um, or, or what is Christ's logic? And uh, this morning I was reading a blog entry um, on DesiringGod.org, and uh, it's a little blog titled "To Faithful Pastors in Forgotten Places." And in there, in that blog entry, uh, the writer rep uh, makes reference to uh, Tim Keller's book "Making Sense of God." And there's a quote there that I think helped me. Um, see maybe some of, of what is happening here in uh, Matthew 25. And again, we don't claim that this is the only way to see this te text, but it helped me maybe to get a sense of of what Jesus is saying here. Um, and the quote goes like this. So, so he's speaking about, so Tim Keller, the, the author is writing about t this book in, uh, by Tim Keller, Making Sense of God, and he says that Keller uh, points out the pattern in Scripture of God choosing those who are marginalized, those who are powerless, those who are weak, those who are um, on the outskirts and the fringes. Um, we see this throughout Scripture. And then he says this. He says, It is because the ultimate example of God's working in the world was Jesus Christ, the only founder of a major religion who died in disgrace, not surrounded by all of his loving disciples, but abandoned by everyone whom he cared about including his Father. Jesus Christ's salvation comes to us through his poverty, rejection, and weakness. And when I read that, um, I feel like maybe God helped me to, to grasp a sense of what is going on here in this passage in Matthew 25. I think what, what Jesus is getting at is that when he, when he lived his life on earth, Jesus literally embodied all of these things. He literally was homeless at times. He literally was hungry. He literally was thirsty. There were times when he was naked and rejected, times when he was the stranger, when his kinsmen, his family, his people rejected him. Uh, of course, he suffered brutal death on the cross. He was a prisoner. Um, he literally was these things. And so 
he's saying if you can show compassion to people in going through those difficulties and those trials, then you have done that in a sense to me who also was those things. Um, and so oftentimes when I read the scripture, I'm, I'm, I'm asking myself, you know, how, how would I respond if I was in this situation? I'm saying, what would I do if, if Jesus came at me with, with this question or, or I was presented with this scenario and observing things that Jesus would do? How would I have responded? And I think where Jesus is going here is to say, if we cannot have compassion and love for those that are poor, those that are hungry, those that are in prison, those that are sick, then we can't love him because he was those things. Um, if we can't receive someone who's been rejected, if we can't take pity on someone who um, is going through these things, then, then how can we love Jesus Christ and love the people that he loves? Um, so anyway, that helped me. And I don't know if that helps you. Uh, maybe that's something you saw from day one. And uh, when you've read this passage, you've grasped, grasped that point for uh, quite some time. But that was, uh, I think, new for me. So anyway, just thought I'd share that with you. Hope you have a great day. Take care. God bless.